There's a lot of definitions out there. And actually I looked on Merriam-Webster because you know, where else would you start when you're trying to look up a definition? And I did not love it. It's, um, it's something like a, a sense of fear and dread and respect at the authority or the sacred or sublime, which is certainly a part of the awe experience, but I'm not sure it fully represents it. So when I think about awe, I tend to think about it as certainly this emotion or this feeling that we have when we encounter, it could be an object or a person that's so extraordinary that almost feels incomprehensible to us. And that brings in two really important features of awe. One is that awe tends to happen when we feel like we've encountered something vast. It could be vast in terms of number or size, something really large, but it can also be vast in terms of a more figurative sense. Like we listen to a speaker who's powerful or just has this, you know, quality to them that captures everyone's attention. Maybe it's the Dalai Lama, whoever that might be for you. It's different for every person. So, so that sense of vastness um, is really important to experiences of awe. And we know it seems to be critical to defining that emotion. And then the other part is this feeling that what you're seeing is incomprehensible. So it really, it challenges the way you see the world and makes you see it differently. And it could be something like a beautiful sunset, but it's so incredibly beautiful that you're like, how does this thing exist? It's just absorbing and all consuming and extraordinary. So I would say those two qualities, that perception of vastness and that feeling of incomprehensibility seem to be essential qualities to the experience of awe. Um, but there's a lot of work that's still to be done on the emotion of awe. And so I think definitions will continue to evolve as we get a better scientific understanding of an emotion that lots of other people, writers, naturalists, um, artists have been really interested in for a very long time. So my background's in affective science. Dacher Keltner is a, a researcher of emotion. So my, that's where my training is. And we think about what are the thoughts or cognitions that are part of this emotion? What are the expressive components? What are the physiological components? What are the behavioral outcomes? So that's kind of the way I think about it. But you know, religion has had a lot to say about awe. Um, and if you go to early religious texts across a bunch of different religions, you don't have to pick the sort of five major religions, you'll see either the word awe or notions that are very similar to awe come up in all of them. Um, and I think religion has a deep respect for that ability, as I said, of these self-transcendent emotions. That's why emotions like compassion and gratitude also feature very prominently in, um, in religion, that these emotions bind us to other people and to our environment, and in the case of religion, to something greater than ourselves. Um, that's part of that self-transcendent process is that you move beyond yourself to something, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a spiritual um, way of thinking or a God that's bigger than you. I would also say that notions of awe seem to be changing, which is really interesting. So I have some new work with a linguist who does computational modeling of how words are used in text. And we've looked at even just from the 19 or 1980s to, or 1880s to now, um, you can see shifts in how the word awe has been used to becoming more positive. So when I say awe now, and I ask participants in my studies, tell me about an awe experience, they often tell me, oh, I saw a beautiful view from a hike that I went on. Um, I saw a, an incredible sunset. I saw this beautiful piece of art. This concept of beauty seems to be uh, more common in at least, I would say, Western modern notions of awe. I think a long time ago, and I would say in other cultures, it does also take on some more fearful components, which makes sense given that part of the experience is that you're seeing something that's really vast that you don't quite understand. Um, that can both be threatening and also really invigorating. So I think it's an emotion that's also evolving, which makes it a moving target and really interesting to study. But some of the knowledge that we have about awe seems to be painting a very different picture of it than how people today, at least in modern Western culture, seem to experience it.